Hello everyone. Welcome to the video walkthrough of DigitalOcean Global Load Balancer. We launched DigitalOcean Global Load Balancer Beta a couple of months back under feature preview. Today, we are excited to launch the general availability of the Global Load Balancer for all DigitalOcean customers. With this release, you can distribute your incoming HTTP traffic across droplets or regional load balancers or DOKS clusters located in different regions. You can set the traffic distribution priority to prioritize responding data center regions. You can enable CDN caching at the edge to reduce end user latency. You can auto scale your global load balancers. And finally, you can automatically fail over to healthier targets in case of any outages. With that said, we're gonna explore the three different scenarios in this demo. Number one is how do we connect droplets to global load balancers? Number two, how do we connect regional load balancers to global load balancers? And number three, how do we connect Kubernetes clusters to global load balancers? For the purpose of this demo, we're gonna focus on deployments in two regions, one in London 1 and one in SFO2. I have already created two droplets, one in London 1 and one in SFO2. And let's start with scenario one connecting droplets to global load balancers. In order to create a global load balancer, go to the networking section, click load balancers and click create. You will get the option to choose regional or global, choose the global and you can enable CDN caching. You can connect the resources here and then choose the name of the global load balancer and select the project and click create. You can also edit the advanced settings up here related to sticky sessions, health checks, SSL, and idle timeouts. You can set the rule forwarding here. And after setting all these configurations, you can click create. Since I have already created two load balancers, I'm gonna pick one. As soon as you create a global load balancer, you need to connect a domain. So go to the settings and click connect a domain. I have already pointed the name server records of this domain to DigitalOcean's name servers. So I'm going to pick this domain, allow it to generate a new SSL certificate and click connect. It takes a couple of seconds to validate. Once the domain gets validated, you should see the status as active. And there is also a setting for traffic distribution priority. Here I have SFO2 as priority one. I'm going to leave it at the setting and I'm going to go back to the global load balancer and connect droplets. I'm going to connect the droplets in London 1 and SFO2. Soon as I connect the droplets, you should see the status turns healthy. Once the status of the droplets turn healthy, we can go back and check the domain. As you can see, the traffic is being served by the SFO2 data center. We can also check the failover here by switching the traffic distribution priority. I'm going to pick SFO2 as priority two and then London one as priority one and save the configuration. Now let's go back to the global load balancer, go back to the URL and refresh the page. It may take a couple of seconds to change. As you, as you can see, the traffic seamlessly failed over to the other data center. That is the responses from London one now. This is the scenario one. In the scenario two, we are going to explore connecting regional load balancers to a global load balancer. So I'm going to jump into the existing global load balancer and will remove these droplets from it. I'm going to remove these droplets from the global load balancer. Now I'm going to connect the respective droplet to the regional load balancer. I'll go back to SFO2 regional load balancer and connect the respective droplet. Now, as you can see, the droplets are healthy in the regional load balancer status. The health checks are passing. Now let's go back to the global load balancer and connect 
the regional load balancer. Now this status should turn healthy before we move forward. As you can see, the status has turned healthy to the URL and refresh the page. As you can see, the, the traffic is being served by London One right now. Now we'll jump into the next scenario where we are going to connect Kubernetes workloads behind a global load balancer. I'm going to remove the regional load balancers from the global load balancer so that I can connect Kubernetes load balancers in this scenario. I have already created two clusters, one in SFO2 and one in London 1. The Kubernetes clusters are accepting traffic right now. So we can validate that by copying this public IP and uh, seeing what it says. Both these IPs are going to show a web page point in, pointing to the respective data center information. Now I'm going to connect these two Kubernetes load balancers to the global load balancer. I'm going to select GLB02, connect resources. I'm going to connect Kubernetes London 1 and SFO2 load balancers. And once it is connected, we can see the load balancers are in a healthy state. Now let's go back to the easy card domain and see if it works. There you go. As you can see, now the domain is being served by the Kubernetes cluster hosted in London 1. So to summarize, we have seen how to create DigitalOcean global load balancers and connect your droplets or regional load balancers or Kubernetes clusters to it and distribute the incoming HTTP traffic across these targets located in different regions. Sooner, we will be releasing a network load balancer as well, which can be connected to a global load balancer to help the UK's customers with TCP UDP workloads to enhance their performance. Thank you so much for watching this video. Now go ahead and get started in using the DigitalOcean's global load balancer and start scaling your business beyond geographies. Thank you so much.